Hey everyone, David East here from the Firebase team and on today's episode of Firecast, we're gonna continue hacking on Angular Fire. Today I'm gonna to show you how to properly handle asynchronous data flow using Angular Fire. And when it comes to handling asynchronous data flow, I have one golden rule. Do not unwrap promises. Now, you might be thinking like, um, how do I get the data if I don't unwrap the promise? Well, to learn how, let's take a look at how a Firebase array works. So here is a basic little Angular app with Angular Fire injected in the dependency array. And what's going on is, is we have this main route where the controller points to this controller, which injects a root Firebase reference and a Firebase array. And that is used to create this list of users, which renders these three users right here. So now let's say we want to do something a little more interesting with this app. So let's say I wanted to know the number of users in this list. To do that, I'm just going to simply log the array and the length to the console. So you can say console.log this.users and console.log this.users.length. And as you can see right here in the console, I have an empty array and zero for the length. But that doesn't really make sense because we have three users rendered to the page. So how does that even happen? Well, that's because this array is actually not empty. If we go and open it up, you can see there's actually three objects for Alice, Bob, and David inside of the array. And that's because a Firebase array starts out as an empty array, but as data is downloaded from the Firebase database in real time, it populates this array, which triggers the digest loop, which keeps our view in sync with our data model. So that's why we see three entries, because they get downloaded to the array as they come in in real time. But still, the length is an issue. As you can see, the length is zero. And the length is zero is because we're logging the length immediately after we log the array to the console. So at this point, the value is zero. So obviously, zero is going to update. So ideally what we'd want is, is we'd want to know when the initial data set has loaded and then log the array to the console. And this is where the dollar loaded promise comes in. So the dollar loaded promise fires off when the initial set of real-time data comes down from the Firebase database. So I can delete this code right here and then call dollar loaded on the user's array and then unwrap the promise with the then function and then log the length to the console. And as you can see, this prints out three. But if you remember my golden rule, do not unwrap promises, you know that this part right here is a blatant violation. So how do we fix this? Well, the answer is use the router. So the router has a resolve object. And the resolve object allows you to inject the resolved value of a promise into a controller, but only after it has loaded. So each property created on the resolve object will be injected into the controller. So this user's key right here will be able to be injected into my controller. And this function right here can actually use these dependencies to create the Firebase array. So we can just copy these from my controller and paste them up here. And then down in here, we'll just create the Firebase array. So we'll pass in the root ref child of users and then call the dollar loaded promise. And some of you might be thinking like, hey, isn't this also breaking the rule of not unwrapping promises? And no, it actually isn't because we're not unwrapping the promise, we're just returning it. And we're passing it off to Angular, which will unwrap it for us and then inject it into the controller. So right here, we can just inject users, delete all this code, and then assign users to the users property. So now we can see the length of the array. So we can log this.users and this.users.length. And when we refresh, we can see we have all the initial data set in the array, and then we also have the correct length. And we know this will be the case because this user's array is guaranteed to be downloaded because we're using the resolve object. So when you're building apps with Angular Fire, don't fight asynchronous data flow. Rely on the digest loop to keep your data in sync with your model and let Angular unwrap your promises for you using the resolve object. So now you know how to properly handle async data flow in your Angular Fire apps. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. So that's all for this episode. We will see you next time. Tune in next week where I'll... Ugh. So that's all for this time. Or that's all for this episode. That's all for next week. Have a good day.